Hi, I'm Terry Schmidt, bringing you practical tips to overcome the most common strategic planning mistakes. For over three decades, I've helped business and government clients in 36 countries worldwide get outstanding results through better strategic planning and execution. Today's topic is not involving key people. I like the following quote by Stephen Haynes, people support what they help create, and it's true. How you involve people can make all the difference in getting the buy-in you need for success. Let me share a client example of how to engineer success up front by including the right people. The Efficiency Commission of the State of Washington asked me to facilitate a special task force to integrate the fishing license operations of two government agencies. I was excited because I enjoy fishing. And in those days, to fish for salmon and trout, you needed a license from the Department of Fisheries. But to catch steelhead in the very same waters, you had to get a license from the Department of Wildlife. Two separate operations, duplication of resources, and inconvenient for the public. My 12-person task force consisted of executives loaned from the private sector and senior managers from these two departments and other government agencies. Combining licensing operations would mean, would mean that one agency would have to give something up and no bureaucracy likes to do that. The Efficiency Commission wisely included the IT directors and licensing managers of both agencies on this task force. As our project evolved, it became clear where the licensing function should be based. There was agreement and it was smooth sailing, or should I say smooth fishing, all because the right players were involved from the beginning. Now had this not happened, there would have been considerable resistance during implementation. So how do you get that buy-in? Well, you start by how, who you put on the core team. So how do you get that buy-in? You start by who you put on the core team. Beyond those team members, identify who else is involved with, concerned with, or affected by your effort. Stakeholder involvement then can be as simple as asking them for ideas, using their input to develop good plans, and running draft recommendations by them. It may, not be politically, it may not be politically correct to say so, but not all stakeholders are created equal. We identified over 30 stakeholder groups, all the way from the Indian tribes with guaranteed fishing rights to salmon charter boat operators, down to the mom and pop bait shops who sold fishing licenses to attract anglers who would buy expensive tackle. As a practical matter, we then identify the key stakeholders using a variation of the 80-20 rule. We held face-to-face -face discussions with these key stakeholders, telephone interviews with the next group, and invited comments by mail from the rest. Everyone had their chance to chime in, and we built consensus along the way so that implementation of a single license from the Department of Fisheries went smoothly. Here are six ways you can handle stakeholders. One, you can enroll them in the vision. Get them excited about the possibilities, the benefits, the payoff of the strategy or project. Second, you can convince them. Use logical discourse and good analysis to show that this is the right way to go. Third, you can accommodate them. Accommodate their legitimate interests within the project. Or you can trade with them. Promise to give them a favor in the future if they support you now. You can also pressure them. Bring legitimate pressure to bear by going up the organization and getting high level support. And finally, you can ignore them. This has some risks, but it's an option. If you enjoyed this video, check out others in the series. To get access to the whole set, drop me a note at terry at managementpro.com. Meanwhile, think big, plan smart, act fast to get great results. Now, I'm going fishing, Seattle style. I think I'll go for salmon.